welcome back to my YouTube channel or if you are new here, be sure to subscribe. I am a lifestyle vlogger and podcast host. I have an entire series on my pod. This is Fitz, by the way, my dog. And that is my most recent finished needlepoint project, okay? I did that myself. Anyways, today I'm sharing my top 50 books of all time. In the past couple of years alone, I've read about 400 to 500 books. So, so I feel like I have some good recs. Really quickly though, before we get into the video, I wanted to mention a couple things. First things first, I do have a podcast, The House Guest Podcast. We have a book series on the podcast where I invite different friends, different influencers, different like, industry people on, and we talk books, basically their favorite books. You get a lot of good book recs. It's just all book talk, okay? Um, so that's on there. Also, this mug, by the way, it's the cutest thing I've ever seen is available, as well as actual merch and stuff. So that'll be linked below. And then I did just launch a blog. So on the blog, there's gonna be an entire post linking back to all of these books. And then I think we're also gonna have an option to email it to you in case you wanna like download it or something or like screenshot it all in one sitting. So I'll have that linked below if you guys are just needing book recs throughout time and don't wanna go back and listen to this entire video. Last thing, I also have a bookstagram that I did leave for a couple of months, but now we're back and I've updated my books and stuff. I've been thinking about doing reels, reviewing every single book, but I just like haven't gotten there yet. So y'all let me know what you think. But reading is like one of my favorite topics in the entire world. I grew up reading Nancy Drew and Judy B. Jones. I'm a Kindle reader. I can't believe I don't have my Kindle one sec. Don't worry, it's obviously not far from me. I have the Kindle Oasis. I have an entire podcast episode where I talk about like why you need a Kindle and why it is the best thing ever and it makes you read so much more. It makes you so much more excited about reading. You just never have to stop because you can always like just download a new book as soon as you finish the old one. Everything about it is just better. I did write an entire list and this is actually on my blog now. So I have them grouped into romance, thriller, Nonfiction. I have one memoir on here and then miscellaneous even though they're not that's actually literally not miscellaneous at all Those should really just be under Romance, so that's what we're gonna do first things first um, the Magnolia Park series So there's Magnolia Parks, okay, and then there's Daisy and then Magnolia Parks a long way home And then Daisy the Great Undoing and the Magnolia Parks into the dark. Those are five books Magnolia Parks is easily my favorite series I've ever read the author is actually a really good friend of mine But I'm not saying that because she is a good friend of mine. These books are just unbelievable They are my comfort reads. I have been going through the hardest time of my life this year and the books just have given me such comfort but they are just so good they're so well written everyone compares them to like a london version of gossip girl which i feel like is the best way to describe it but it's so much better than gossip girl it's a romance novel i love bj like i just think it's a very weirdly like realistic while also very unrealistic book like there's a lot to their stories that i feel like is just like very human but I love these books. I would say like a London style gossip girl books that you will never be able to put down There's a reason so many people like travel in for things with Jessa and like have Magnolia Parks tattoos and things Like if you take anything from this video read Magnolia Parks. It is so good Also, if y'all are a Magnolia Parks lover, we have so many uh, podcast episodes up with Jessa that I'll link below They're the best Okay, so that's one through five. Six through nine are actually the friend zone series. Listen, listen. I think the title of this series does these books such an injustice because they actually talk about very heavy matters. It doesn't feel super heavy, but you get very emotionally invested. I think the covers don't do this book justice. It, it looks a little bit more teeny boppy, but it's not. Like these books are so good. I read every single one of these books in one night. So I read three books in three days and I'm just, oh my God, I love them. I honestly would love to go back and reread these books because I think it's been enough time. And then I also, by the same author, have Part of Your World on there. I loved that book. They're so good. Next I have Before We Were Strangers and I actually just got an email that she has a new book coming out soon. That's another romance novel that I'm so excited. So that's Renee Carlino. Before We Were Strangers, I've also had her on the podcast, but Before We Were Strangers is the book that got me into romance novels. When I started reading fiction again in 2020, I thought I only liked thrillers. Like I didn't realize that I actually love romance novels. And Before We Were Strangers, I read that in an entire night, like in one sitting. I didn't even get out of bed. It is just such a good book. And if you're trying to get into romance, I would highly recommend it. It's so good. These are like good smut, like light reads that are just like good to like kind of get you out of a book rut. But to love Jason Thorne and to hate Adam Connor, right? Yes. By Ella Mays. 
I love those books. Margot and Emily, maybe it was just Margot actually, recommended the first one to me. And I started it that night and the next morning I had a flight and I finished it by the time I went on the plane. So good. And then I finished the second book like pretty shortly after. By the way, some of my descriptions on these books are going to be really bad. Just one, I'm not good at it. And two, some of these books I read like two or three years ago. Um, To love Jason Thorne. Jason Thorne is a celebrity and gets kind of reconnected with someone from his past and just like a normal girl. It it's just such a good book. Just trust me on that. Oh my god. Speaking of my favorite series, this is my second favorite series ever and I'm so emotionally invested in these books. The Simple Wild. So that would take spots 14 through 17 and there's actually a novella so it really should have been 18. The Simple Wild, Wild at Heart, Forever Wild, Running Wild, K.A. Tucker. These books take place in, I think, Alaska, I want to say. Like a random small town. The girl's originally from Canada. It's um, a grumpy sunshine plot or trope, if you will. I love grumpy sunshine. Like, I love miscommunication trips. I hate enemies to lovers. But this is just so good. She goes to Alaska. She's, like, reconnecting with her father. She's this city girl who would, like, never survive there. She meets this guy. It's just grumpy sunshine in the best thing possible. Like, my mom even read these books and loved them. Like, they are good. Beach Read by Emily Henry. I actually don't love Emily Henry's books, like, always. I like I liked the last one she put out. I didn't like People We Meet on Vacation and the other one, but Beach Read, I loved. I read it immediately. I feel like you're either like a Beach Read girl or like a People We Meet on Vacation, but I personally really loved Beach Read. I also felt like Beach Read was not a good, like the title was not even like a good title and cover for it. The Last Letter, Rebecca Yaros. Guys, oh my god, first off, Rebecca Yaros. When I read, what was it? The Things We Leave Unfinished first, which also is on this list, so we'll do that too. And then I read Fourth Wing, and then I realized that those two authors were the same person. I was, like, beside myself. I literally couldn't believe it. Like, for some reason, if you're a fantasy author in my head, I just can't picture you reading, like, a normal book, let alone that book. But a lot of Rebecca Yaros' books have, like, military ties to them. And this book, The Last Letter, I remember finishing it and sobbing in my pool. I was like reading from my pool. That's my dog, one second. Okay, if you wanna sob and like actually cry like uncontrollable tears, that is the book for you. Pack Up the Moon by Kristen Higgins, another one if you're gonna sob. Such a good, good book. Again, I read this one years ago, but I absolutely loved it. Things We Never Get Over by Lucy Score. Listen, I don't think the next two were like that amazing but again grumpy sunshine sunshine trope unbelievable i love like a small town vibe i love when it's like cozy like that is the vibe that i need and this is like one of my top romance books i'm sure you all saw it everywhere i read it in montana and it was like the perfect place at least i finished it in montana it's like, the perfect place to read you know it's just so good like oh my god Knox. like I would, I would literally do anything for them in the likely event, Rebecca Yaros, again last summer, I went through a big Rebecca Yaros phase, but it wasn't her even her fantasy books, it was her romance novels, and I, like, I don't know, I just love, like, a military time, I just, I love those books, and again, I sobbed, like, I wish I could go back and read those all again for the, for, for the first time, because unreal. Meant to be Emily Giffen, now listen, this is, like, a Caroline Bissett, I'm pretty sure that's the one that's with the Kennedy, one of the Kennedy, I know she's with one of the Kennedys, this this book is loosely inspired by the Kennedys and it's not even loosely it's basically like a fanfic of them but it's such a good book like they're in New York City they're going out I mean it's just it's everything and if you are someone who is into the Kennedys fascinated by the Kennedys honestly if you've been like a US history it's fully reads as just like a romance novel but those ties like it just made the book so good like I cannot recommend enough 28 summers Ellen Hildebrand now listen Ellen Hildebrand novels if you guys are not reading Ellen in the summer you're not reading okay you need to be listen up I, Ellen has changed my life so much because I discovered Nantucket because of her. I love an author that writes about a specific location, like Jennifer Hillier's all like Pacific Northwest. Ellen Hildebrand is up until, you know, this spring, it's her last Nantucket novel, has written, I think at this point it's 28 or 29 
um, Nantucket novels and they're so good what's so cool about them is that a lot of them have I mean obviously every location she talks about it's like the real location like for example as I'm filming this I'm leaving for Nantucket for the third trip that I've taken to Nantucket in the past two years because that is how much I love this place and I would have never gone had I not gotten into Ellen Hildebrand novels and she really did something for me okay but everything she talks about like the box the chicken box the proprietors uh pavilions m like mudslides like everything that she talks about in the book is actually like real life on Nantucket and then also there's characters that go in every that are in every single book basically so like the chief of police like certain like bartender like just certain characters that are in every novel but they don't read as like serious some of them are serious but there's just like certain common themes but they're all pretty much standalone books and I just think they're so good so I love 28 summers um I love golden girl Wait, I also am so confused that I didn't put Five Star Weekend on here. Oh, I did. It was still on a different lows. And then Five Star Weekend is, for whatever reason, it's like my favorite Ellen book. That's the one that she released last year. I've read most of them and I love them all pretty. There's there's probably one that I didn't really like. And I like I love them. They're all so good. I'm currently reading Swan Song, which is her book that's coming out, I believe, in June. It's the last Nantucket novel of hers um, and they sent it to me early and I'm just so excited but Five Star Weekend is really cool because she's grieving the loss of her husband and then she has a house on Nantucket and she decides to invite four different women from four different parts of her life to have them and host them at this weekend trip on her on Nantucket at her house. She's a food blogger so she's like technically an influencer but it doesn't like normally when they're like influencers and things like that are brought into books I feel like I don't typically like it but I actually really I didn't mind that at all. If anything, it was like more interesting to me because I just like the food element of it. But yeah, it's so good and so much happens obviously and it's, it's like a good wholesome like feel good book if you need that. Another wholesome feel good book, Eliza Starts a Rumor by Jane L. Rosen. I love Jane Rosen. Eliza Starts a Rumor is my favorite book of hers. Like they're just, it's so good but it's a very wholesome book. Eliza Starts a Rumor, they have this like forum online. I read this two years ago, so like keep that in mind. They have this forum online where it's like the neighborhood gossip, neighborhood stuff. She starts a rumor, it goes everywhere, whatever. I loved that because I grew up in a town, McKinney, Texas, that's north of Dallas. They had this Facebook group called McKinney Moms. And I mean, it's like exactly what you'd expect. And it was like so crazy. And we would make <laughs> fake accounts growing up to like get accepted, like as if we were like a mom in the community, like fully fake accounts to get accepted to be able to read this stuff because it was literally like so crazy. I mean, I don't know what it is now. And I don't want these moms to come after me, but the reason I loved Eliza Starts a Rumor so much is because it reminded me of McKinney Moms, you know? Okay, All Your Perfects, Colleen Hoover. Listen, this is one of those books that I feel like no one talks about from Colleen Hoover. I've read every single Colleen Hoover book that there is, by the way. And you know what? I can't believe I didn't put more of Colleen Hoover on this because honestly, like, there's some books of hers that I actually, like, really, really love. So let me just toss them in right now while we're here. But All Your Perfects... I loved that book and it's very depressing it's very sad and it's just very emotional like I cried in it and there's like a about like kind of like a divorce again I read it three years ago and I still remember like really loving it oh I loved Verity that probably is on my um thriller list to be fair I also loved Reminders of Him I love November 9th I really liked Heartbones I love the like Texas of it all too. It happened one summer, Tessa Bailey. Like you have not read Smut until you've read this book. And guys, listen, my mom was just listening because I used to post those like in feed, no screenshot book rack posts on Instagram, right? And my mom would just like read the books that I recommended. And you'll never believe my horror. Okay. Then one day my mom texted me that she just finished It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey, and I was like, oh my god i cannot believe what and then my mom read that book and two that she told me like i literally wanted to die um but anyways it is the best smut novel it's so good every summer after carly fortune i personally did really like this book i know that it was like all the rave and then when it's all the rave people start talking about they hated it whatever i think it's a really good summer read it's like pretty much the same thing as love in the other in other words i read that one before and i loved that book it's like one of my top books and if it's not on here maybe i already said it but if it's not on here it should have been in like top 10. Love in other words, so good. I'm putting Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo under romance. I mean, I don't even know what to put that as a category because it literally is a, everything. And I love this book. I finished it in probably like four or five hours. I thought it was one of the best books ever. I love how much happens. I love Evelyn Hugo's story. I love the twist. I love the turns. It's like old Hollywood, this very famous Evelyn Hugo decides that she wants to write a book on her life she calls this like random 
reporter, knowing it's gonna like change her life basically, but has no idea why. And then Evelyn is like kind of awful and everyone hates her. Um, and then you realize why she picked her throughout the book and then it keeps going on and on and on. And like, I just love this. Like I could easily reread this book. I loved it so much. Moving on to thrillers. So earlier I mentioned Jennifer Hillier and she is one of my, if, my, if not my favorite thriller author. Little Secrets is the first thriller book I always recommend to people. The Wife Doesn't Kill the Husband. It's very unique um, and it is so good. It's about like a missing, a child that goes missing and the mom is like really dealing with the grief of that and then feeling like no one's taking her, like the case has just gone cold basically. And it is so good. Again, all in the Pacific Northwest. The Butcher, this is one of those books that I just, I sometimes if I read a book from an author that I really like, I'll just read all of their other books like in a row in one week and I'll get like very into it. The Butcher by Jennifer Hillier is one of those and it's one, like you see the cover, I would have never expected to have liked this book and I loved this book. It was so incredible and like I'm so glad that I picked it up because it's not something I would normally grab for. I loved, next book, sorry, The Silent Patient. I don't even know I'm gonna pretend Alex, I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Um, I hated The Maidens, by the way, the second book. I don't even know if I finished it. I don't remember anything about it. I just remember I hated it so much. But The Silent Patient, I finished in a day. So good, I personally loved it. I feel like it's very hit or miss. You either love it or you hate it, and I really loved it. It's so good. Then she was gone, Lisa Jewell. I mean, Lisa Jewell is incredible. I also put The Night She Disappeared, and here's the thing, I read these books a bit ago, so you guys will have to, you know, read on screen what they're about. But, um, I really loved them. Molly loves Lisa Jewell. She recommended me one, if not both, of these books, and they're both really good. Okay, The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. Listen, my one gripe with this book is the ending. It would have been a five-star book for me, and it was like 4.5. It's still so good. I would like a different ending. I really would. But, personally, loved. A Flicker in the Dark, Stacey Willingham. I actually cannot remember the ending of this book now, but I don't think I guessed the ending. I remember this book being like taking you on a lot of twists and turns and I really, really enjoyed it. Local Woman Missing by Mary, is it Kubica? Kubica? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I loved this book. I think it's such a foolproof thriller and I actually had recommended this book to so many friends and they've all come back and said they absolutely loved it like above and beyond like you know they're not lying because they're going above and beyond 20 years later by Charlie Donnelly listen talk about whiplash with a book I mean this place it's all over the place and there's so many stories but you're into all of them and you need to know and then I started reading more Charlie Donnelly and I loved this book Emily loved this book as well help reads I just I think she did but this is a great book club book by the way not every book is good for book club because you need a book that really has a lot to like talk about and dissect. And this book, I mean, it had so many things to talk about. And it was like, genuinely, it was crazy. Um, so if you want a book that like really keeps you into it, it's following this like very successful like TV reporter. It's just such a good book. And her dad, she's keeping it a secret like who her dad is and her dad is this big criminal and it's like a whole thing. So anyways, very good. The Last is Parish by Liv Constantine. Also, oh good, I do have Frida McFadden. The Last is Parish is the exact same book as The Housemaid, except for The Last is Parish came out first. But I will say, Frida McFadden is one of my thriller authors, favorite thriller authors ever. We'll get there in a second. But I love The Last Lessons Parish. It's actually the book that got me into reading fiction again. And I just absolutely love that book. And it's very, like, a lot of wealthy people. This woman comes in. and it, I don't want to, like, say anything without, because I feel like I'm going to, like, give the book away. But I loved that book so much. And then my two favorite from Frida McFadden, the first is The Inmate. You will not guess the ending. Again, talk about whiplash the end of it. You're so like, oh my god, I never saw any of this coming. And then so much happens again, it feels like you like whiplash, you know? Personally, I loved that book. And then I also loved The Locked Door. You really can't go wrong with Frida McFadden though. Like a lot of people love The Housemaid. I just read The Last Lessons Parish first. Uh, but it's also a really good book. Then I have five quick nonfiction recs for y'all. Book number one is Attached, and I think this is one of the most helpful books you could ever read in terms of understanding yourself, understanding yourself in relationships, and understanding like ways you can improve. And it's just absolutely incredible. It goes into attachment theory, um, and I just like cannot recommend enough if you're single or in a relationship or whatever. Honestly, it has really nothing to do with your relationship status. It's just a very interesting book. Uh, just that like I just 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 guys can you tell I'm like really out of it today I'm trying to like get through this video and I'm really struggling attached is so good and then stop walking on eggshells 
by Paul T. Mason. My therapist had me read this book and it really changed my life. It's great. Um, it's written for if you're dealing with like people with bipolar disorder, narcissism, or um, BPD, which is borderline personality disorder. And I learned so much in this book and it was unbelievably helpful. <sighs> this has come as no surprise if y'all are podcast listener, but the next one is the gap and the gain. If you struggle from being a firstborn daughter, if you struggle from being an Enneagram type three, if you struggle from being an overachiever, this is the book for you, especially like hustle culture right now. This helps teach you how to operate from the gain versus the gap and it completely shifts everything about your life. It changes your mindset. It really helps you actually end up producing better work because that really negatively can affect my mental health so it really helped me as far as um my mental health goes my dad also read that book and loved it 10x is greater than 2x by dan sullivan if y'all are interested in any like personal development business type books i cannot recommend that enough it's basically just talking about like scaling and doing less work for a higher reward versus when you're doing too much work a lot of the time like you won't be making that much progress that's it's like working like linear versus working like exponentially it's really helpful I love their books so much and so does my dad. Last book I have is a memoir and it's actually Jessica Simpson's memoir. It's so good. It's called Open Book and as like, you know, the Texas girl that I am, I especially loved it because she grew up in like Dallas area and a lot of the churches that she talks about that like her dad preached at and all of this stuff, like I know where they are, I pass them and whatnot. Um, I also grew up like loving Jessica Simpson really it was my older cousins like Alyssa the one who just got married We were obsessed like we went and met like Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey. We were obsessed with newlyweds and you know I was like six at the time, but I just loved Jessica Simpson and it was such a big like pop culture moment for us like growing up and then to read her story and hear what she's been through is like really really heartbreaking but you respect her and admire her so much and it is my favorite memoir i've ever read and i've read so many memoirs like it's just the best one ever so if you like pop culture if you like um I, I honestly if you like pop culture in general like you will like this book it is so good okay so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed i tried to keep it as short and sweet as possible with 50 books i couldn't go through every single bio but again, everything will be linked on my blog if you guys need anything extra or need any more information or anything. You can always follow KE Book Club for my updated Instagram um, book reviews. But I love you all so much. Happy reading, guys. I really can't wait for um, all of you guys to be tagging me in your stories when you're reading these books because I'm just so passionate about all of them and I really want to hear what y'all think. If y'all made it this far, be sure to comment some book emojis down below. Love y'all and I will talk to you soon. Bye. I am exhausted. I don't have time to do everything. I don't have enough time to do all of my hobbies. So what has really, you know, suffered is my social life. And, you know, for obvious reasons, I haven't really been leaving my house much the past couple of months and I've been very depressed. So I have been spending a lot of time doing hobbies. And, you know, before that, even before I had, you know, all the extra ones that I've added, I've always been into them and by always I mean since you know I told you guys when I wanted to start hobbies and yeah they've really just done something for me and not just any hobbies it's grandma hobbies okay the grandmas are onto something like they really know what they're talking about 